training right now at the Colorado Trail. And uh, we've got a little less than three months to get ready for this. Our goal is to run the entire Colorado Trail in 18 days. Every few days I think to myself, wow, what have I gotten myself into? Am I gonna let the kids down? But then I think about the kids and the reason we're doing this. And I'm reminded that it is worth it. It's worth all of the hard training and the pain and the tired legs, the tired body. And that's what helps me keep going when I'm doing that. New at 10 o'clock, Kids Aid provides food to more than 2,000 children each week by sending food during the weekend gap with the Kids Aid backpack program. Now, during the COVID-19 crisis, Kids Aid has been feeding even more families, causing a large new gap to fill. And one Grand Junction couple is taking many extra steps to do their part to help. Why the Colorado Trail? Why not? <laughs> I could think of a ton of reasons why not, like running 27 miles per day in high elevation for 18 days straight for 490 total miles in the middle of July. But they think about the unthinkable. What we do out on the trail and, and, and whatnot, food is incredibly important to us. Growing up without necessarily having food available it's just kind of unthinkable. A local couple is taking steps to complete the 490 mile Colorado Trail in 18 days. So why are they doing this? It's for the kids. How are they doing this? They run everywhere they can, hopefully not wearing a tie in the middle of July. We've been working on this for over a year, so obviously we're not just doing it because we're sick of being inside the house. That would be my first answer. Um, and I've told so many people I'm doing it that I can't back down now. I can't stop knowing that these kids, you know, could benefit from what we're doing to help them. So I'm all in. And Doug and Melinda plan to start their run July 16th, and they'll do the legwork, but they need the community's help. Aww. I'm Melinda McCaw. Um, I run my own website design and graphic design company here locally. I love everything outdoors, especially mountain biking, trail running, and I would say downhill skiing. Hey, we're at Jackson Hole for the weekend, doing something besides running. Allie, drop it in. You're on camera, girl. Super fun, having a great time. It's snowing a little bit, so. Anyways, we're just headed up the lift for our second run of the day. My name's Doug, um, I'm Melinda's husband. Been mountain biking and, and whatnot for a long time. Bikes ever since I was since I could walk. You know, we just like being in the area and enjoying life. One of our first real dates, I took you on a six hour bike ride. A mountain bike ride, and I was, I was a new mountain biker. Took me out on this slog of a ride. It's lots of uphill climbing. It was really, really hot. I wasn't a very good biker, so that was a hard ride for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I stuck around, so I think you figured out, you figured that well, maybe I was a keeper. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> the fact that you weren't done with me at that at that point, we, we had yeah. we had a great evening and everything else. So, how are you guys feeling about this endeavor right now? I mean, really, like deep down inside, are you nervous? Are you are you are you, you can't wait for it to happen? Like, how do you feel? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm nervous. I feel pretty. I feel confident that we can do it, but it's a big, scary goal. Like. Be honest, it scares me. Oh. When I think about what we're attempting. <laughs> like, can't like the thoughts of can we actually accomplish this? It was across my I mind mean, every once in a while. Either, the way it's laid out, it's essentially a marathon every day. Marathon yeah. plus. A marathon every, with an average of five thousand feet of climbing a day. Yeah. So. And and you're you're doing this for eighteen days. So essentially what I am doing is working with Doug and Melinda as they prepare for this event where they're going to run the entire distance of the Colorado Trail. 
And one of the things that so many people do when they prepare for such a thing is they focus on the physical training. And the physical training is important, but my philosophy as a trainer is that people who have issues with their body, it's not their body. They have issues with how all of this is coming at them and how they process that. You know, there's distractions, there's excuses, there's reasons, there's other things they want to do, or they think they're doing more than they are, but they're not looking at it as an entire system. Getting excited about running the CT and to be honest totally scared too I mean what if I'm not ready what if I don't train enough uh, what if I give up I hope I don't got back from a training run. Today was a uh, second day in a row of 12 miles each day. We ran six miles this morning and ran six miles after work today. Um, we took our daughter with us after work and she chose the route. Not feeling too bad. Definitely getting used to the longer training days. training is coming along. Um, I've recently been experiencing some really some soreness in my hips, both hips, especially the right hip. Um, so I've kind of slowed down on the running this week. I had been running almost every day. Anyways, um, did some aqua jogging a couple of the last days this week and today I'm going to head out on a mountain bike ride, uh, see if, if that's a little less impact on the hip. Um, talked to a colleague of mine that's really good at uh, physical therapy and really understands the muscles and how they work together and I've got some things to try so I'm hoping that I can get past this hip soreness I need to keep uh, training we'll see how today goes um, my hip is feeling better so we'll see how it goes out runner today um, yesterday was a big day. We did, I did, uh, like 25 miles and like almost 4,000 feet of vert. So, today we're out on a 20 mile run. About, uh, halfway through. Feeling reasonable. I don't know why. It's not easy. But, uh, body's feeling decent. So we're gonna keep going. One day at a time. Hey. Hey. What's going on with your face? Uh, training accident. <laughs> so tell me what happened. Oh, uh, you know, I was I was a little little tired probably and didn't pick my feet up far enough. Just tripped. Landed my head on a rock. It hurts. I'm 15 miles in. Five miles to go. I think I'll walk for a while. There was a, a short period of time there where I almost made a phone call. I don't think it's very deep at all. I think it's just, just, just kind of a skin wound. But yeah, no, it was kind of good. I got my shoulder and got my knee and face is face is what everybody sees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, funny how you think was running, especially when you start getting tired. Things. Sometimes you, sometimes you trip a ball. Now this is probably the worst, the worst fall I've had running um, since we started running. So anything else hurt on you? My shoulder a little bit, not too bad. Just sore, not an injury though. Oh, I, I scraped it up. Yeah. 
yeah. Rug rash there. Got my knee. See a little bit of rug rash. It's all part of the dues, huh? Yeah, you know, that all happens. How's the running going? Good. Got in, uh, logged a 25 mile run yesterday. Um, did about 4,000 feet of vert. Um, Together, or did you do that on your own? I did it on my own. Oh yeah, she's actually. Uh, she's she's taking a break right now. Yeah. Um, you and concerned then, about that break she's taking at all? Not at all. I'm frustrated. They tried running again today. This is day five, no running. And by a quarter mile in, the hip glute issue was screaming at me again. Turned around at a mile, at a half a mile, and ran back. So I got a big mile today. I feel like. What if it's a muscle tear or something? I'm gonna be sitting out forever and I feel like I'm gonna lose what I've gained with all my hard work. I'm really frustrated. Anyways, I'm gonna go for a bike ride today. So, at least I'll get a little exercise. It's just not the same. Never entertain the possibility of failure. Because when you start doing that, then you start planning for something to go wrong and essentially what you end up doing is inviting that into it. So instead, my job is to anticipate and listen to them and when they have concerns, you know, answer those questions and then work on a system. If something's hurting, we find a way to address it now and then talk about how that can be addressed out there on the trail. I've had a lot of frustration the last couple of weeks in my training for the trip. Uh, in fact, you see I'm in my bike clothes today and that's due to some of that frustration. I've been dealing with the hips, those are getting better. And then a couple weeks ago, both of my Achilles tendons started to bother me on runs. Um, working down through that, those are getting better. And what do you know, something else. Um, last week, about the middle of the week, felt like I had a pinched nerve or something out of place, a hitch in my get along, I guess is what you would call it. Um, and it came to a head really bad. This past Sunday, we were out on training run. The goal was 19, 20 miles. Uh, I ended up calling it at 12 miles that day just because it hurt too much. Um, and I, have, I tried to run yesterday, which is Monday, Got about three quarters of a mile and had to quit. It just wasn't working. Got up this morning, did a test run up and down the street, still feeling it. So decided, you know what? I'm getting out my bike. I'm getting some exercise somehow, even if it means I'm not running. So I'm enjoying a bike ride today, but definitely frustrated that I'm not running. Um, hoping I can get this fixed soon. I need to get back on my running. We've got less than two months. Starting to feel the pressure. So come on back here. So is it around the joint or is it more around? It's kind of right in here. Okay. I especially notice it when I'm climbing up hills. Okay. Yeah, you don't feel straight. It's okay. So we have um, a little bit of muscular compensation happening, which, you know, it happens because we have a dominant side, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to work out some of these muscles in this area. Okay, okay. Yeah, pretty tender. Okay, I want you to hold this leg here. Now I want you to push against my hand like you're trying to touch your heel to your butt. Yep. Relax. If we compare that to some of the previous sessions, uh, today's graph number is a 90, which is extraordinarily good. 
Uh, it compares very favorably to some of your other numbers. In fact, it's your highest one in quite a while. I'm picking a couple of the acrobat. These are the needles we're using today. This is a very specific protocol. It has a foreign object to the body. The needles draw a person's blood to the area. And as a result of that, that's how we heal. So I am encouraging the blood to come to an area that sometimes with swelling and irritation doesn't go to. So this is designed to promote healing. So you can imagine the more hydrated it is, the slicker it is, and the easier it is for everything to move. Sure. So when you can get um, everything to get hydration to it, then you have actually a better range of motion. Um, so a lot of times when we do fascia work on people, it's not that the muscles were tight for stretching, it was the connective tissue that was holding them. Okay. So when we do this, it starts to get the hydration in there so that all that water you're drinking can move, and then it's slick and mobile and supple. Cool. And that's probably why you're starting to feel better is between the adjustments and then this, you're getting everything to open up. Awesome. I am super excited today because today was my second run after doing Bowen therapy and my hips are feeling even better today than they did after yesterday's run and during yesterday's run. Uh, they're still sore, but definitely um, improvement. So I'm excited about this. Um, I was able to uh, increase my run distance today to nine miles. Uh, yesterday I did six, and all of last week I was only doing four miles a day. So I'm pretty excited about that. And we'll see, see how it continues to improve. So tell me what happened. Um, Doug was out trail running today and um, he was with a buddy. Luckily it was our, our good friend who is an ER doc here locally. And he tripped, I guess, on a little step down area and couldn't catch himself. And he landed again on that same knee he hurt last time. And uh, obviously his wrist, so. I got a call right after I got home from my training ride from him saying, hey, can you pick me up at the top of Easter Hill? Um, I was like, oh, what happened? He's like, it's my wrist. So I picked him up um, from there and headed home real quick to get into a more comfortable vehicle and came down here. And now we're just waiting to see what's going on with his wrist. but. Uh, they actually had splinted it on the trail. Um, looked like it's possibly broken. So, yeah. How is there? How is he? Does he seem like he's in pain? He is definitely in pain. Uh, it kind of comes and goes. It was pretty bad driving home from the trail just because I was in the forerunner and that thing's pretty bouncy. So he was definitely feeling it then. Um, I'm not sure right now how he feels. I haven't seen him in about ten minutes, but. Like right now, the better one is when I broke it. It started swelling really good right in here. Stretchy, stretchy. You've been unusually perky. <laughs> Today I've got to take Doug to the hospital to have surgery on his wrist, so that's going to take up a big part of my day. Um, probably take my laptop with me and. 
have something to do while I'm waiting. <laughs> well, you know, apparently my structure is, is in need of um, some additional reinforcement. So. Did you twist the bone or push it out of place? Yeah, so I guess what we did is we kind of kind of moved it, rotated this this in relationship to this, so the joint itself just kind of moved over a little bit. I'm talking to people, it just seems like getting it fixed now is going to make it stronger, it's going to make it heal faster. Um, I guess the, the mental picture I've got is we've got a putting a splint on the inside um, and a splint on the outside so we can get it to heal pretty quick. With the splint on the inside it will all be held together nice and tight so it, it's, it uh, should heal faster which is good. So. Did he say how long you have to wear a cast after this? Um, Obviously you'll be wearing it through our trip. Probably yeah yeah probably. I may, I may be wearing it for the trip just as protection. Yeah. Whether I need it or not. But. Uh, we are actually packing the Forerunner for the trip. This vehicle is what will always be with us, so we're packing the first three days of stuff that we need. And then when our other support vehicle comes in on day four, she's going to bring a bunch of other stuff, which will be in that truck over there. So we've got, we've got our, uh, our ice chest for our food. We've got um, 11 gallons of water. We've got all the food bins. We've got... Uh, uh, the camp stove and everything else. We got the porta potty. Um, we got we got a, a tent. We got a tent that awning for um, the cooking under. And then we got uh, our shower tent and everything else. And then the food and shoes and What's everything else. This is the vehicle stays with us all the time. This vehicle will be with us most of the time. So um, we'll we'll pack the back of this as well. So we'll end up having three ice chests uh, with us at all times. We've got a fourth ice chest that's kind of running in and out um, a couple times to, to bring to bring more frozen food in uh, and make that work. So. How much planning is it taken to, to figure out what goes in what and what goes in what bins? And give, give me a little... Countless hours. I don't even know how many hours we've spent over the last year and a half. Probably the last month has been the biggest part of it. But we've just spent hours and hours together <laughs> planning, making spreadsheets, figuring out how many bins we need, what goes in the bins, labeling them, trying to make it easy for the people that are bringing um, resupply, food, and whatnot into us. A lot of hours. <laughs> A lot of hours in front of the computer. You thought the hard part was the run. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> the mentally hard part is is the planning, no. <laughs> How are you feeling right now with it just a couple days, three days out? Yeah, it's a little over three days. Uh, feeling good. Did a 13 mile run yesterday. That was great. Um, not sure if I'm ready for the altitude gain, but I'm ready to just get out there and have to just remind myself that um, it's not a race. I just the finish every day. So I don't have to go fast. I just have to do it. My role is to be support. Um, I'm helping to set up tents, take down tents, driving from one point to another. And our beautiful granddaughter is going to be helping us and we're going to be prepping meals, fixing, uh, meeting them on the trail to um, give them the nutrition that they're going to be needing and give them the support that they need in whatever way, um, helping in just whatever capacity that needs to be helped. And sometimes I'll put on my doctor role half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a box of essential oils that we're taking with us, and we are 
going to be using those to help relieve pain, reduce sore muscles, help with breathing if we need that, um, and just general well-being. So how are you guys feeling this morning? Good? A little bit. I'm feeling great. It was a short night, but... Is your head buzzing? No. <laughs> My head was buzzing yesterday. I'm gonna say you were wound up like a tired tank. So as soon as you finished your work and we started doing the other stuff, you just were like excited. It's really yeah. kind of fun, fun to watch. You ready for this, Melinda? I'm ready. Let's go. I'm excited. there it's about ready to take off it's been a, it's been a long journey so we're ready to just get going get on with it and and see what we have in our legs today well day one was exciting i mean starting from the parking lot and having actually having people there <laughs> yeah us was really cool yeah it was um, great to see everybody and in fact one of our good buddies keith he showed up and ran the first six miles with us which was really cool because it helped the time yeah go by Quickly. And, and that, that's the section that's like all on like fire road. It's just like boring. It's just boring. So it was great to have somebody to chat with and just talk the entire first six miles. The Colorado Trail. The soaring peaks of the Rockies divide clouds with their sheer height and stature. The tranquil mountain streams quietly ripple and trickle between every rock and every crack. Throughout all this natural beauty lies the beaten trails of cultures that cherished and wandered these lands long before we did. They left nothing behind but the paths they took, passed down from generation to generation. At one time, Colorado was so heavily dependent on mining that railroads were practically the key to the state's development throughout mining towns and cities. As mining began to fade in the 20th century, rails were torn up and left as blank trails where their history once stood. Luckily, many of these old rail beds and wagon roads have been repurposed as some of the many access routes leading to the Colorado Trail. Keen eyes will find old miner cabins, entrances to abandoned mine shafts, and dismantled mining equipment lightly scattered and forgotten throughout the Rockies. The completed trail spans between Colorado's capital, Denver, to the small mountain town of Durango, crossing over 480 miles in between. The trail crosses through over eight mountain ranges, six national forests, five river systems, and passes nearby over 15 different towns across its impressive length. The Rockies are also known for their deep valleys and towering peaks. In fact, the elevation gain throughout the entire trail adds up to over 90,000 feet. That's about triple the elevation of Mount Everest. The highest point of the trail is at Coney Summit, roughly 13,330 feet above sea level. And the lowest point, 5,520 feet in Waterton Canyon near Denver. On average, the Colorado Trail is about 10,300 feet above sea level. Thanks to the effort of the Colorado Trail Foundation, the trail looks better than ever and is well known for being beautifully maintained and inviting to many hikers from any possible background, granting a wonderful sense of solidarity while also being non-intrusive to the natural beauty surrounding our lovely trail.
Oh, they're running. We're okay, 15 miles in. 15.3. So feeling pretty good. Finding a few little sore spots, yeah, but not know, too bad. Things are talking a little, but that's that's to be expected. Um, we're just kind of working them out and kind Happy of moving. Happy with the pace, though. Yeah. How are you feeling compared to what you thought you would feel right now? I think we're about. about I was on. feeling about probably what I thought we would. Yeah. Um, some of the climbing was a little. Actually, it was it was interesting, hard, but it wasn't bad. It was just like one of those like just keep going kind of things. It wasn't like oh, I'm in so much pain, I can't. Yeah, I mean it was go. interesting because you know my, my my previous experiences through there through there have been on the bike, bike. and in, in some respects we moved through it a lot faster on foot. The technical stuff is a lot easier on foot. Yeah, it's been good so far. All right, cool. We'll see you Happy down at the bottom. Place. Three and a half miles from the end of day one. Legs are definitely tired, <clears throat> especially the calves. Feet are starting to hurt. Um, it's been a great day though. Really hot after lunch coming up that hill in the wide open and then the, uh, got, the rainstorm came in, got caught in that. But we weathered that just fine with our rain gear, which is awesome. It was pouring pretty good. Now it stopped raining, and we're both enjoying the uh, overcast, cooler weather, and just working to finish out the day. Looking forward to some recovery time, sitting down, massaging, stretching, and of course, eating. That last little bit, my legs were just like dead. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I we ran in, but I. That lot, yeah, I was so tired was by the so time tired. we got to the end, and I was just like plunked myself down and got we were interviewing us, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I just want to eat. That's about the time where it starts to sink in, where you're like, I eat this tomorrow. Hmm. Hope they recover. <laughs> Happy. Happy, it was good, but I am tired. It was My feet hurt. Good thing it was a little easier day. My yeah. ankles hurt. <laughs> you guys have any concerns at all? Everything you felt is about like you thought it would? Yeah. Little, I, I hurt know. a little more than I wanted to. Yeah, I think, I think they've, got, they've got a few more aches and pains we wanted. But My Achilles are... is bothering me. I'm a little concerned about that. That's kind of to be expected. It's, yeah, it's probably like a stretch life. it really good tonight. Is that something that, that can that can heal overnight and you'd be ready to go it's again possible. tomorrow? It's possible. It was good. I'm I'm glad to be done though. I'm not ready to put my feet up. I'm tired of running. For the day. <laughs> For today. Yeah, yep. we'll do it again tomorrow. 
Is that working? <laughs> I just had a tender spot. Right there. Ow. I got pretty sore today. So tell me about what you guys are eating. So uh, we're just, we have refried beans here. Um, we eat a fully plant-based vegan diet, uh, gluten-free as well. So, um, no dairy, no gluten in our meals. So it looks like mm -hmm. cheese is not cheese. <laughs> yeah, so just simple bean burritos tonight. Uh, it's not anything fancy, but it's delicious. And beans, for me, tend to be something I crave. Yeah, they're or nice, nice food to kind of... After a big exercise. Put the recovery back. The, I was walking around camp that second morning. I was like, oh man. <laughs> Am I going to make it? <laughs> I think I took a video of, of my thoughts, even. Good morning. It's about 5.45, day two. Just getting up, getting started here pretty soon. Uh, wow. I'm tired. Um, felt soreness overnight. Did a lot of tossing and turning. Um, felt like I rested pretty good, but not sure if I slept super great. I'm ready to go today. Just give me some time to wake up. I'm definitely wanting to go today. Um, body's starting to feel it a little bit though. So, <laughs> anyways, excited to get to the end of the day. I am starving already. <laughs> My metabolism has definitely found a new level between yesterday and today. Definitely have some sore spots, but that's not stopping me, and I am ready, ready to get going. So we'll see what day two has in store for us, but it should be good. Have you guys stretched yet? Mm -mm. Yeah. I stretch all the time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's only day two. <laughs> Exhausted. <laughs> Day two, four tenths of a mile in. Not feeling too bad. Legs feel pretty good. Maybe slightly tired. I'm sure I'll feel it more once we start climbing. I'm feeling okay right now. Feeling like I recharged pretty decently last night. Excited to see what today brings. Look at those legs. They're so strong. You can see them flex every time she hits the ground. That definition. Mmm. These cool forests. We're up in the aspen. Just kind of cranking. This is cool.
So this segment is 12.2. We've got about 16.6 on the next one. Um, so we're getting close to lunch. Yeah, my legs are tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my right Achilles today is bothering me instead of the left. Yeah. So they're taking turns. Yeah. Well, that's actually good. <laughs> so, so how uh, compared to yesterday? How are you doing? I mean, I mean, obviously the train's different today. It feels harder to me, probably because my legs are. Yeah, harder. you can definitely feel mileage on the legs. A lot harder than yesterday. Um, but you know, 16. we we've been we've actually been really moving along. We we did uh, like f we've averaged 4.1 even with stops today this morning. Yeah. Um, we run along. We we actually. Stayed in, in front of a couple mountain bikers for quite a while. Yeah, they were like, you guys are fat. It's <laughs> like, I feel that fast, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we're like, thanks. It feels good to sit down. Oh. <clears throat> Wiggle the toes. That wrist giving you any trouble at all, Doug? The only trouble's been, the only trouble I've had is the, the sleeve on the inside. Finally got rid of it. This is the sleeve, sleeve for his cast, and it's very wet. Smell it. Smell <laughs> <laughs> <Not> good. <laughs> about four miles in after lunch. Legs hurt, feet hurt, ankles hurt. I have another 12 and a half miles to go today. That's all. We are about 6.5 miles from the end of our day. I'm really tired. I think the rest of this day is going to take some pure determination to finish by putting one foot in front of the other. I cannot wait to get to camp and lay down. And this is only day two. What in the world is every other day after this gonna feel like? I'm hoping to get stronger. That's my hope. But right now I'm I'm not so sure. This hurts. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. Look what I found. Uh, it was hard. <laughs> uh, the trail was pretty nice. It wasn't like super up. It was kind of gentle, but my legs were shot. Shot. That uh, was the hardest last eight miles ever. 
just because it was the last eight miles or was it was it actually hard it wasn't what actually... if it was the first eight miles would it have been hard no the terrain wasn't hard just tired i was just tired my legs were dead the only thing that got me through was pure <laughs> grit <laughs> determination music because i got the bright idea that i was gonna blast music so and just putting my one foot in front of the other. Oh, we did it though. So, oh. give me a little insight. I just... Wow. After lunch, we was just up and up and up. Legs were pretty dead and... My shoulders hurt. My Achilles hurts. Everything below my knees hurts. What do you see for day three? Day three is going to be a challenge. Yes. Because the all terrain the is a lot harder. Yeah, we got a bit more tomorrow. up, I think, tomorrow. What's that? There's more elevation gain tomorrow. So we're gonna have to work it. It's day three, just the beginning. I'm kind of grumpy and tired. Not super excited, but I'll work into it. I hope. Stomach's been doing some little flip-flops, not not feeling like nauseous, but it's just not feeling great. Hoping to work through that quickly. I think I'm gonna plug in the headphones and listen to some music and get my uh, self in a better place. Because right now, I'm not super excited be out here already in the cold running oh wait I'm hiking right now I'm supposed to be running now so, gotta go I think we've got a ways to go to yet today. <laughs> it's gonna be a little while. Give me a kind of a rundown of what's happened up till today, up till now today. So this morning we started out, we did about eight miles, caught up with the vehicles, um, refilled. Um, then we did another, oh, what's six or seven miles in, about six in. Had lunch, so we got 14 down and 16 to go. <laughs> you fired up? Not exactly. <laughs> I just ate lunch. I'm feeling nappy. You did pretty w real well up till lunchtime though, right? Yeah. yeah you made a good time. Maybe we're sitting about almost four miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get back on your pace as soon as the video guy leaves you. Yeah. Low. Let's not get mom and dad really wet because then they'll get chilled. We don't want them cold. We don't want them to get hyper. I'll meet you down there in a minute. 
bring a gun and you could, you could just like harass my shoulders with it. Uh, no, Melinda, what are you looking forward to? What? What are you looking forward to? We are going to Piante's Pizza for dinner tonight in Breckenridge. It is the best pizza place we found in Breck. They have gluten-free crust that's amazing. And they have their own homemade mozzarella cheese, which is amazing. And jalapeno poppers to die for. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Is that worth 10 miles right now? Yes, right. very much. We're going to eat there tomorrow night too. <laughs> All right. Okay, see you at the top. Okay. All right. Talk. We're two miles up from Jefferson Creek. Four miles to go. Up to Georgia Pass. Stopping for a quick break. Gotta keep going. I want some of that Piante's pizza. What about you? Yeah, Piante's. That's my goal. Jalapeno poppers. And pizza. Yay. Made it to the top of Georgia. Woohoo! Four miles down, and we'll have our 30 for the day. Hey, hey guys, where's the top of Georgia Pass? We've got about what 27 and a half miles in today. Yeah, about four left. This is day three. We're gonna have about 90 miles at the end of the day. Doing good. Tired legs, of course, but doing well. So hope you guys are having a great day. for our support to arrive. That was a very long day today. 31 and a half miles, nine hours and 40 minutes on the trail, a little over 4,600 feet of elevation gain. Uh, it wasn't as hard yes as yesterday mentally, but I'm really, really, really tired. Um, hungry. Anyways, uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Just glad that today is done. And that I'm not still running. Uh, it's day four. Yesterday... Yesterday went really well. It was a really hard day. It wasn't anybody's fault. Logistics made it so that when we got done yesterday, sport. Sport wasn't here. It actually felt pretty good. Just really tired last night. But by the time support got here, it was a little late for recovery and food. So I kind of had a rough night. I guess you would call 
all this serious bunk. We had support and videographer come in to the top of Georgia Pass, which was amazing. It was so cool up there. But they had a really long, hairy uh, four-wheel drive road to go down. After that, probably about 20 miles of it, where, whereas Doug and I had like four miles to go down and we were done. Um, so that really is why they weren't able to veto us in time with a recovery drink and uh, dinner. Um, so yeah, we didn't get the pizza that we were really looking forward to, but we're gonna do it tonight. So something to shoot for for tonight. And, uh, I'm feeling much better. I'm not sure why I'm crying. Probably just because I'm so tired. I feel like a train ran me over. <laughs> but I will not give in. I will get through this and it's going to be an awesome day. I'm starting to get cold holding this camera, so I'm going to turn it off. I'm ready to get out there and push hard and have us another successful day. There's a path I'm on It's mine and mine alone Laced with white flowers I see blue sky in the cleanest of it Chasing the sky from Denver to Durango Nothing can stop me as I make it through another day Day five, um, been up for a little while. We are camped at Lake Dillon in uh, Frisco, Breckenridge area. And I'm up, ready to go, feeling good. Uh, yesterday was a great day, finished in the dark, got back to camp, ate an entire pizza by myself. Um, starting to feel like I'm getting used to this as a daily routine. Uh, today we don't have support meeting us for lunch, so we're on our own for the whole time, but I'm excited about it. We'll see what the day brings. I might be tired, legs of fire. But nothing can stop me. Seeing the top of that mountain Chasing the sky From Denver To Durango Nothing can stop me Make it through another day. Got okay. approximately 2.3 miles left to end day five. At the top of Tennessee Pass. I'm suffering. My feet hurt. My ankles hurt. My quads hurt. 
I'm out of downhill today. And let's see what else hurts. My back hurts. And I'm really tired. The only way I'm getting through this is just keep putting one foot in front of the other. This is for the kids. Uh, I keep going. Two and a quarter miles. Can't wait. Good morning. It's uh, day six and just got up. Our goal is to be on the trail in about an hour and a half. We'll see if that happens. We've been running a little slow in the mornings. Feeling pretty good. This is my dad. My parents brought um, resupply for us today and they'll be back on the 28th with another load. Oh, it's been huge. Um, without Doug's folks to, to support the whole time and keep us going and without my folks to re and resupply, we couldn't do this. It's just too much stuff that we would need to carry for 18 days. So, without them, this, this trip wouldn't be possible, I don't think. <laughs> well, you're gonna have pies. Yeah, she made 10 apple pies. Now I turn around and show your face. <laughs> We were gonna start running in about five minutes. Um, we got up here and Doug didn't bring his shoes. Hey, Dad, where's the shoe box? <gasps> They're back. What? They're, they didn't get put in. I'll, I'll run after. No, you're not running after. Get your stuff out you need right now, and I'll go back back quickly. You know, every day we get up and get going, but it's, you know, first we had all that excitement, you know, in front, the hoopla, and, and people just encouraging. And of course, watching Doug and Mel struggle to get their rhythm. Now it's the grind. Now we got to go day to day and just do it. Having a hard time here. Uh, five miles in, day six. This is so hard. All I have to do is put one foot in front of the other. It's not always easy. You know, your body's tired. You don't sleep as well as you do in your own bed by any shake. I'll tell you that much. But I'll tell you one thing. It's worth doing, but it takes some fortitude. And you know, it's, it's hard to come up with that fortitude when you didn't sleep well or it was a little cold when you got up. And I don't know, it's just one of those things. Oh, I'm not hurt or injured. So why am I letting me, my mind, do this to me? Ugh. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. Gotta keep going. But when you do it, it works out just fine. And every day moves you closer to your goal. I mean, today we're, we'll be near Leadville, and that's, that, that's a big mark. It was day, day six, I guess it is. And so lo, lo and behold, you know, that's a third of the way through. That's how fast it goes. Beautiful country, beautiful things, but there's still the, you gotta get up in the morning, you gotta get the tents down, you gotta get breakfast, you gotta get everything in it. You know, it's okay, we do it. And I'm excited for them. And you know, at the same time, there's this hurdle. And we're 
definitely gonna make it. But, you know, <sighs> woke up this morning and said, okay, do it again. <laughs> like mind games for me though. Yeah. Like I sat down one time and I have it on video. I said, I don't want to go this afternoon. <laughs> Tired every day, but stronger. Yeah, you know, it's it's a good time to stop tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I can sit down. Yes. Now go get something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Day seven was awesome because Allie joined yeah. us for the first for the first eight miles of day seven. Uh, we just got to the trailhead, and Alice and our daughter said, "I really want to go with you guys." <laughs> so she's she's running back to camp really quick and uh, getting some getting some a little different clothes, and we're gonna run the first seven miles with her. You all having fun? Yes. What are we doing? <laughs> you know, it was it was cool to see her get through it, and, mm -hmm. and she had her she had her couple moments where she was like, yeah, "I don't want to go up anymore." <laughs> yeah. Well, it's gonna go down here pretty soon. We um, kind of had to coax her through a few sections, but. But it was it was good to see her. It was fun to do it as a family. It was, it was. To see her actually interested in being with us on the trail for yeah, a for sizable distance. A couple so. hours, really. Um, you know, I mean, maybe two and a half. What's going? How are you feeling? feeling? Great. Feeling good. This morning was really fun having Allie along. I'm really proud of her. She ran almost seven and three quarter miles with us. Ah, it was great. It was awesome. It was fun to hang out with her and you know help her learn you know a little bit of the the way we move along the trail. Yeah. It was just really a lot of fun. It was good. Feeling good. She made a comment. She was like, "This is harder than just a home." <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to hear, yeah. you know, because the altitude does play a difference. Yeah. How are you guys feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, not bad. I wasn't quite sure about this morning before Allie decided to come with us. I was yeah. a little unmotivated. Yeah. But having her come along, that was awesome. It was. That helped perk me up. Yeah. All right, I'll let you guys go. There's people coming. Yeah. Right. We'll catch up with you. All right. Little side trip away from the CT. Uh, interlocking. 
hotel, I guess, resort, right here, off of the side of Twin Lakes. This is the top of Hope Pass. That's Twin Lakes over there. Yes! Yay, we made it! That was the hardest climb ever. My legs are super awesome. tired. She's running away. Oh no, I'm gonna have to run after her. Come back, come back. I'm about to get you. <laughs> All right, so this is the trail and we're coming down through the rest of it down through here. It's awesome to be out in God's amazing creation. See all this beauty. This is the view I'm seeing right now. Beautiful. Surrounded by mountains. pretty good start to the day as far as speed 5.3 miles in hit a little rough patch last 2.3 miles Doug and I got into a big fight working through that right now not speaking a lot it was something stupid of course so anyways Keep moving, always forward, always moving. Feeling pretty good after lunch. Doug and I worked out a little argument. <laughs> Feeling better about that as well. Having a great day. favorite things of doing 14 years is, is this type of view. It's been raining on us pretty good. We're staying warm but the rain gear on and we need to make progress. Running around the puddles. Quick pano, it's still raining. Not as bad though. This is what the trail looks like after the rain and hailstorm we just went through.
legs are feeling good. I feel like I'm getting more used to the elevation, the amount of elevation gain and descent. Um, yeah, feeling good. I'm getting really used to doing a marathon a day. Okay, so the question we get a lot of is, how do you feel? And honestly, if you ask me that question after the first day, um, I'm struggling, I'm tired. But you know, the days have worn on, each day, I've been feeling a little stronger. My body has been adapting. My body's been getting used to what we're doing. That sounds weird, but in some respects I feel stronger today than I felt starting out. Day nine. Uh, when today is over, we will be halfway through our trip. 232 miles so far. We just started hiking. We've got 31.8 miles to go today. About 62 or 6,300 feet of vertical gain. It's gonna be a big day. My feet are a little tender today after yesterday. This is my foot after being wet for 10 miles yesterday. Got a nice warm and puffy. So tell me. I'm the Star Master. These stars don't know who they've been messing with. I kick them to the curb. We are six miles from lunch! Yay! It's raining again, so we're in full rain gear. So, we've got about 14 miles to go today. Um, feeling pretty good. Hoping we can push the pace a little and get in earlier than our average has been lately. Because if we keep the same average we've been doing, we're going to be getting 
finished tonight at like 10 o'clock at night, which doesn't really sound that great to me. We are 10 hours and 24 minutes in, and only at 24 and a half miles, and we have to go 32. Oh, we're both tired, very tired, exhausted. Have a little over six miles to go. We'd like to lay down, go to sleep. It's getting dark. I'm tired and exhausted. I really wish that I was done. I don't even want to finish right now. I am so tired. A few minutes ago, I kind of lost it. Had a little meltdown. Not my proudest moment. I just not really sure where the trail is. Uh, this doesn't seem like much of a trail right now. I'm not even sure where the trail is. I'm walking across the shale field in the dark. And we still have like probably 3.8 miles to go. Are there Karen still? Yeah, right here. I sure hope we're going the right way. One of your hardest or? Yeah, I think so. It was really good in the beginning, like the morning was awesome. We had this like fog cover when we started. And so it was really cool because the mountains were coming in and out of the fog. So we got some really good, cool footage. And then after lunch, it just wasn't even that bad. Just that after dark part. Because it was like five miles in the dark, probably three hours in the dark. Long time. Yeah. <clears throat> I was in tears when we got that. <laughs> probably because I was happy to be done. Probably because it just hurt. Exhausted. When you do have a day like this, or any of the days you've had that are rough, what is that internal strength? How do you, where do you pull your strength from? How do you get up and do it again? That's a hard question. I don't truly know exactly. I think just, just being so focused on the goal is part of it. I don't think it's all of it for me. Um, obviously thinking about helping the kids I really don't want to let him down. And the the part more focus on me is just, I know there's naysayers and there's skeptics out there, and I want to prove to them that I can do it. And I want to prove to myself that I can do it too. So that's probably most of it, those things. Good morning. It's day 10. Getting a really late start. I didn't get in until about 11 o'clock last night. Um, long hike in the dark. You know, it was a, it was a long day. Got a blister on one of my heels. The other heel is trying to 
create a blister. But we're back at it today and trying to hit it hard and trying to keep going. Gotta keep going. I wanna help kids. It took me a while to get going this morning. But now I'm out here. We'll see how the day ends up. You know, I've always known that my wife is tough. Blisters on both heels, feet swelling. She's out here. She's cranking. She keeps taking off and going. So cool. She wants it. She's after it. Morning of day 11. Just getting started. Feeling pretty good. Have a big day today. You know, we got a long ways to go. The goal for today is uh, about 35 miles. We're about one into it. Really pushing for at least a four mile an hour average. Hoping for faster, we'll see what happens. It's all foggy around here. Uh, it looks like the sun's trying to burn it off though. Still moving, still grooving. Um, it's gonna be a longer day. Gotta go, gotta make tracks today. Honestly, I was hurting the next day. That was the day of my ankle. I had this, had this really sore spot. And I, I twisted my ankle or rolled it. I've taken to uh, running down the hills quickly and while I wait for Mel, massaging out my ankle or my Achilles because my calf is tight. Um, it's been not bad pain, but it does hurt. So, working on doing some massage work on the trail. Mm. Ow. You were actually pushing pace on me a bit. Yeah, I was um, feeling pretty good that day. I'm feeling pretty good right now. This is day 12. I've gone seven miles. And uh, we are about to hit the two hour mark. Feels like we're flying compared to the last few days. It's nice to be moving. My feet are feeling pretty tender today after all the wet feet for several hours. I'm a little concerned about them. Not really wanting to take the shoes and socks off to look though. We'll see what they look like tonight. Um, it's nice to have sunshine, warmth, and not be wearing my rain jacket and pants. Having a great day so far. We were moving pretty good. We were making really good time and I was like yeah. super hopeful. I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get in early. This is gonna be great. We're making such great time. You know, I told Mel today, I said, hey, you know you recover from an ultra? He said, no. I said, run another one. You recover from the first one. <laughs> I don't know, bad joke. That yeah. section before the creek crossing it was, was hard. mentally hard for me. Yeah. I was tired, it was hot, dry, boring. Yeah. You know, and we still had several miles to go. And then after the creek crossing, we kind of got going. Yeah, that was kind of a pick me up. Just, I, I don't know. Yeah, we just we kind of got going and kind of kind of moved out. And we actually got in at a reasonable time that night. Yeah, that was, was Like five, six o'clock or something like that. It was About eight miles out. Um, I don't know what it was, but I was just able to kind of like ignore the pain 
and just focus. And then when we got, there's a river crossing like three and a half miles out. And when we got there and crossed the river, that felt so amazing on my feet and ate a Lara bar. And I don't know, I just had like this burst of energy for three and a half miles. Today was, it was all about, you know, just kind of going and getting the legs back under us and, you know, trying to get some nutrition back in while we were running and, you know, recovering. Awesome. What's your outlook? For the next six days, uh, you know, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna we're gonna make it. And we're two thirds of the way. Today was day twelve, so Nobody. six I more days. Awesome. It's getting there. Very it's cool. possible. We're gonna make it. <laughs> Tell Scott. The joke. He already knows because Larry has it. But Pete and repeat were standing on a fence. Pete fell off. Who was left? Say it again. Pete and Repeat were sitting on a fence. Pete fell off. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and Repeat were sitting on a fence. Pete fell off. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and Repeat sitting on a fence. How long can this go on? <laughs> Who was left? It's uh, day 13. We've got uh, two sections to run today. A total of 27 and a half miles. Woke up this morning feeling rather tired and unmotivated. However, now that I'm on the trail, I'm feeling pretty good. Legs feel good, feet feel good. Nothing hurts right now. It's an amazing feeling. I'm pretty excited about it. Hoping it lasts all day. Today my feet are feeling good. Da -da 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 -da. Like they should. Yay! My feet feel great. Today my feet are feeling good. Da -da 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 -da. Just like they should. see more of those really cool rock formations over there. Be amazing looking. Ah, uh, it's been a great day. Um, Weather's been great, energy level's been great. We've been doing good on our uh, nutrition and hydration. Uh, we've gone 18 miles, we've got nine more to go. Feeling strong, having a great day. I was really tired by that point. Yep. And you get down, you get down to the bottom of the pass, and you're like, "There's nobody here." So yeah. we start off the road, and they, 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 they were just Spring Creek. I was frustrated because I thought they were going to meet us at the pass. No, we had to, we had to run all the way to camp. It wasn't that far. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hungry and cranky. Uh, that, was that was your birthday. Yeah, it was my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dog. Happy birthday to you.
it's the morning of day 14. Um, when I woke up this morning, I wasn't so excited about <laughs> getting out and going. We have a really big day today, 33.1 miles, uh, 7,344 feet of uh, climbing. When I came out of the tent, it was literally like black clouds over us. Um, that's past, and now we have blue sky above us, which is really cool. Uh, it's, it's a big day. I think it's our last really big mileage day. I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about the beautiful scenery we're gonna see. Um, it's hard to believe it's day 14. We've only got five more days, which is exciting and uh, a little bit sad at the same time. It's been a journey on this trip. It's been really cool. Um, it's been really hard. So tell me again how many more times you have to do this? Oh, let's see. Today is 30. There's one, two. So 30, one, two. The, there's um, So there's four. Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday set up. Yeah, that's three days. Take downs. Four. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And tonight. And tonight. No. No, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Well, it feels like we So it's Friday down. Battery down, so, no, it's only. Th it's three and three? Yeah, after you get this one set up. Woohoo! Do you hear that, Allie? <laughs> only three and three! Woohoo! <laughs> We're not getting tired of this. Look at that view. Wow. So blessed to be out here. Able to do this. I love it out here. I gotta find a way to spend more time out here. These last uh, 15 days have truly been an amazing experience. Definitely pushed my limits. See what I'm made of. Taught me a lot about myself and nature, giving me a new perspective on what's important in life. Really, truly great. Met some really neat people on the trail. Saw the amazing scenery and wished I could just stay 
at that spot in time. It's been awesome. We're having a great trip. Four days left, including today. You gotta keep going. I was thinking earlier today, we need a little more balance in our lives. So, we're working on balance. Honey, how does, how does this trail suit you? Oh, it's just great. Monkey. <laughs> Say, would you like a banana? What we do is we throw all the other little orange ribbons. It's little orange ribbons. Look, there's trail. So we're just about out of this mess. Day 16. You've only got three more days, including today. I'm really excited about that. You can just taste it. We're so close. It's been a great trip. It's had lots of challenges, but it's been good. I'm gonna turn this off and get back to running. We have uh, 31 miles to do today. A little longer than I had remembered. I guess I got our hopes up on like a 28 day. But uh, this is where we're at. And we're uh, out here to get it done. really excited. Uh, today we're going to realize our goal. We're going to accomplish our goal of trail running the entire Colorado Trail, which is about 490 miles. Pretty excited that I can say that I've done it here in about 20 miles. That's pretty cool. I think it's an, a, a really cool lifetime accomplishment and I'm excited about it. A little sad too. Um, it's just been great being out here the adventure of it, the, the journey that we've gone through. But at the same time, I realize that I'm tired. My body's tired and I need a break. So I'm really looking forward to 
getting home to my own bed. We've we've almost accomplished our goal. We will have done that by the end of today. We need everybody else's help now. We need your help. Take a step for us. Take two steps for us, or three or four, or however many you can take, and um, help us accomplish our goal of, of raising $100,000 or more. More is always even better. We would love to exceed our goal so that we can help more kids. We've got a lot of downhill to do now, so I gotta get going. I'll check in later. That was cool. It was neat it was really to see cool. see everybody. It was really fun, also because Allie and our coach yeah. met us a, a mile from the end of the trail and came in with us. So that was special. Um, but just crossing that line together and having everybody rush around us was really cool and um, it's neat. It's neat. Exciting. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was a wonderful finish. Was a lot of fun. So this is like a bunch of the guys I work with. It's really cool. Really cool. Are you tearing up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are wonderful people, but you, you're fairly ordinary. You, yeah, we're not special. You, you have a normal life, you work, you got a baby, you, you get out and run, you go like you guys love the outdoors, but do you guys realize what you did? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, <laughs> when I took this project on, I didn't think you were going to make it. And I thought, this is going to be an awesome movie because it is going to be three quarters of the way through this, they're gonna be dragging themselves, they'll be bloody, they'll be, I mean, you know what I mean? Right. I yeah. mean, seriously, you guys did something crazy. You guys don't run marathons. Yeah. You go out and run 10 miles here and there, maybe 20 on a, on a yeah. big day, and you guys ran the Colorado Trail almost 500 miles in 18 days. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that, setting that goal and achieving it? Amazing. I mean, it's so cool to accomplish that and to be able to say I've done it. It's, it's, it's. I yeah. think there's still a part, like, when you say, did you, do you realize what you did? I think no. there's still a part of me that doesn't really, it, ha it hasn't really sunk in, honestly. I look at it a little bit and I go, that was a lot of fun. It was really cool. What can I do that's... I <laughs> wonder how I push that next time. A Grand Junction couple is raising thousands of dollars for two local nonprofits. This after running hundreds of miles across the state, and they're not done yet. Last summer, Doug and Melinda McCaw set out to complete the entire Colorado Trail. It's about 490 miles, spanning from Denver to Durango. For a typical hiker, it takes about four to six weeks to finish. The McCaws did it in just 18 days. It was definitely hard. I had a lot of times where I was tired and didn't want to keep going. Um, didn't want to take that next step. <laughs> didn't want to be in that position that I was in at that time. One of the biggest challenges is, is, is in between your ears. <laughs> you know, saying, can I do this? Can't I do this? Well, what is it that Henry Ford said? <laughs> Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right either way. Being able to raise a bunch of money for, for a couple of Nonprofits that are very dear to our heart um, is, 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 is great. 
It started out as just a personal challenge, but turned into a fundraiser as well for Kids Aid and the Intermountain Adventist Academy. So far, they've raised more than $20,000. They had a film crew document their entire journey. The film, Chasing the Sky, is expected to be released in local theaters next month. The couple did tell us off camera that if you think what they did this time was crazy, just wait. There's a path I'm on. It's mine and mine alone. Laced with white flowers, icy blue sky in the cleanest of it. Chasing the sky from Denver. Nothing can stop me, make it through another day. This is more than I can take, my body wasn't made for this. All the feelings rise, then fall, then melt and disappear. Chasing the sky from Denver to Durango. Nothing can stop me as I make it through another day. Chasing the sky Chasing the sky Chasing the sky